moms and women. Um, but God's design was that as dads, we would have a much greater influence on our children than I think uh, most men tend to have. And dads matter. I just started to write a list of some of the ways in which our dads influence us, and I'd like to get some feedback from you as well. Um, but I think that if you were to think about your own life and maybe even ask a few people um, the influence that your dad has had, we get a lot of things from dad that we don't necessarily get from mom. I know that we get uh, typically our, um, our confidence, our ability to, um, uh, to do things with, a, with a, a measure of confidence typically comes from dad. I have a friend. He's 67 this year, and uh, his dad never built him up, never instilled in him, never said to him, you can do it. Uh, you uh, just press on uh, um, and, and never taught him things. And he's 67 today. His dad is, is, is passed away many, many years ago. And uh, every time I talk to him, it becomes very, very clear that to this day, he is still trying to make an impression on his dad, who's no longer here. And he's, he's, um, it's, it's not happening because he has no confidence. And I just feel bad from every single time I talk to him, um, still trying to live up to a standard um, that his dad would have wanted for him but didn't instill in him. Um, I wrote down, I think most of us get our sense of humor <clears throat> from our dads. How many of you would, would you say that's true? How many of you would say that your dad was a little bit more crazy than your mom? Is that, is that pretty much the case? I can always tell um, when I'm talking with a kid um, where they, who they spend the most time with um, by their sense of humor. Um, I remember playing a joke on a kid, and the kid just looked at me and said, why in the world would you do that? <laughs> so, because that's what guys do. <laughs> and I knew this kid spends all his time with his mom. And again, I'm not, we just, dads are more crazy than moms are. And I'll tell you a funny little story. <clears throat> I'm a bit of a dare. And uh, uh, my dad um, had instilled that in me. I remember years ago, <clears throat> we were taking a small boat out to the Isles of Shoals. Me and Phil and my dad. And uh, I've been out there many, many times. And it's very, very choppy. It's, it's absolutely crazy going out there in a little boat. And uh, we had gone maybe 10 minutes. And the boat was just pounding against our waves. And we were just flying out there. And my dad just starts yelling. He says, stop the boat. Stop the boat. And I pull it back and I stop. And he said, oh, Steve, I am positive. I am 100% positive that before we get out there, that this boat is going to flip over upside down. And then he paused. He said, can you give me a place to put my <laughs> I need a safe place to put my wallet. Well, can we slow down? Can we turn around? I just need a safe place for my wallet. And uh, um, we get our our, uh, um, our 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 wildness, our craziness, our confidence, and, and we can just uh, name some things that you got from your dad that you didn't get from your mom. How to fix things, sure, sure, that's all right. And of course we're stereotyping a bit here, but, but that's, that's the community. Casey Anthony. Squishy, squishy hugs, okay, good, good. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, good. And, and ladies, please don't misunderstand. I know that you can have great sense of humor and all that. This just isn't Mother's Day, all right? So, this is Dad's Day, we're honoring Dad's Day. Um, the most important thing, though, and this is God's design, we read it in Deuteronomy, uh, that we get from our dads is our faith. Um, there are exceptions to that. Um, Paul uh, writes to Timothy and says, I know, that the faith, I know the faith that was in your grandmother and your mother and now is in you. Apparently it wasn't in his dad. But the rule, that's the exception, the rule is kids tend to follow the faith of their dad. Even in homes where moms are Christian and, and dads not, um, they tend to fall to dad. And the degree, the measure of the faith, if dad is kind of uh, lax and, and mediocre in his faith, the kid's going to be as well. If dad's crazy passionate about it, then it tends to fall on that the kids are going to be crazy passionate about their faith as well. And so um, I just wanted to comment with knowing and understanding that those things are true. 
and that that's God's design, and that's the way that He He put it all together. The verse is in on the the um, uh, magnet that we're going to hand out. Be strong and courageous is from Joshua one nine. But let me just put it into context a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, this is starting in verse 8. Um, actually, in verse 7. Do not turn from the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So the command is be strong and courageous. But in context, we understand that the way in which, as dads or anybody, can be strong and courageous is by stepping back to verse 8 and verse 7. Do not turn from the right or to the left. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night and be careful to do everything that's in it. That's how we can be strong and courageous. Um, we, we can put ourselves as believers in a place spiritually or physically where we ought not to have any courage. Um, or or, or, or we, we would be rightfully so filled with fear because we've stepped outside of the boundary that God has placed around us. But when we're walking in obedience, when we're walking in accordance to, God, in accordance to God's word, and we know that uh, we're, we're uh, within his will, then we can be strong and we can be courageous. Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for within three days you are going to pass over this Jordan to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. So here's what's going on. They are about to go into the promised land, 40 years of wilderness wandering. And um, in that promised land, there are all kinds of unknown uh, dangers. We, they know that there are giants in there. They discovered that 39 years ago. Um, they know that there are just some unknown, it's land they've not been to. And God has them sitting at the edge of the Jordan River. For how long? For three days. Why, why not just, hey, okay, you're here. It's been 40 years. Why not just send them across the Jordan River right now? Well, many have proposed that what God is doing is he's setting them at this river so that they can do two things. Reflect on the last 40 years of God's provision for them. His power, his protection, his provision, all of those things. Because where they're going is really not, it, where they've been is nothing compared to where they're going. It's going to be a battle in a very literal sense going into the promised land. And so they're, they're called to reflect, but called also to prepare themselves by that reflection, submitting themselves once again to the hand of God, the power of God, and the trust in God. And I think that's very appropriate for us as we celebrate uh, our call as dads, as we just uh, reflect on our call as believers, that uh, there ought to be times in which we sit by the uh, proverbial Jordan River and remember God's provision and His protection over us, and remember that in every battlefield, every promised land that we enter, which is every day, uh, God's plan for our lives that we simply cannot do it unless he is with us, unless he goes before us, as he did with them to the Jordan River. And it is in that reflection and in that understanding that we can be strong and courageous. Whenever we leave that, whenever we step outside of that, whenever we think we can do it on our own, uh, we will find ourselves very weak and fearful. But in that place, we can be strong and courageous. And so, um, that's for all of us, but specifically this morning, at Dads, we matter. We matter more than we possibly could even wrap our minds around. How much God has designed it that we matter in the shaping and training of our kids and in the leading of them into a relationship with Jesus Christ that is passionately on fire. And as our fire increases, as our conviction increases, as our commitment to Christ increases and to our children increases, uh, we will see uh, fruit from that um, in children that become Christians.
crazy passion for Jesus and equipped for a world that uh, you can't live in without uh, being crazy passionate for Jesus. So.